Hello, hello. All right, we are live today. Hello, I'm Shana Searcy. And I think we are live. All right. Hello. Good morning. Hello, everyone. I'm Shana Searcy, and I'm excited to paint with you today. Um, I am going to be doing a live session right now on watercolor holiday card making. I just released a video that you can definitely go check out um, in my list of videos uh, just released yesterday, I believe. And I had a couple of questions about some other ideas, some holiday card ideas, but also about how to actually assemble some of the cards. I didn't quite go over that in the entire video, which uh, I'm gonna do right now, kind of live with you. So the first thing um, is that I've done a lot of different um, watercolor card styles and ideas. There are a bunch of them here. Some of them were in the last video. I did three simple ideas. I'm going to continue to release videos that go over different ideas um, and kind of walk you through step by step. We have these lovely dove and all different kinds of bouquets and pine cones and wreaths. And I'm gonna go over all of that video by video. I'm gonna do a couple of cards in each video over the next couple of weeks. Um, but today I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to actually assemble them and kind of what supplies and materials you need uh, to get the finished product. And also, um, I will do one sample of a card. I think I'll do a wreath today. Maybe I'll do this Believe wreath here, although the stamping can change very easily in terms of our sayings. So with that being said, let's go over supplies and materials and how um, to bring your cards together before you even decide like what you're going to paint on your card and or what you're gonna stamp on your card. So the first thing um, is I have to decide, or when I sit down to start making watercolor cards, I try to figure out like, what do I want the final card to look like? What do I want the finished card to look like? Good morning, Rhonda. Thanks for joining me. Um, so there are a couple different ways to do this. Okay, first way, the easiest kind of all-in-one package way is that you can buy watercolor cards specifically. They come in foldable watercolor cards or there might be a postcard that's like a single sheet. These are Strathmore and there's Strathmore and Arteza and I'll link um, these two brands. I've used these two brands before. I'll link them in the description if you wanna check them out on Amazon. Um, but these are great. They have a nice textured outside for painting. The inside is a little bit smoother. It's like a hot press outside, or I'm sorry, cold press outside, hot press inside, a little bit smoother. And you can paint directly on the card. You can tape up your borders to create a nice white border on the outside, do a decorative border, whatever you want, but you can paint directly on the card. And then the inside is just a blank card. You can stamp a message inside or handwrite a personal message, whatever you wanna do. So that's kind of easy all in one. They do come with envelopes when you order them, um, the Strathmore and Arteza ones, uh, but that's number one option. Number two option, which I do a lot, is that you can use any watercolor paper that you have sitting around and cut it to size and then decide to affix that piece of watercolor paper to a pre-made card. So here are some craft cards, they come with envelopes. These are single sided, so it's just one sided card where you would write right on the back, it's not a foldable. Um, and you would paint your design on the watercolor paper and then you would affix it to the card. Um, I use this permanent adhesive by Tombow. There are a lot of different versions of this, um, but this is a tape runner. Um, for adhesive or glue, and I'll show you how it works, super easy. Normally I do this after I've painted the card, but I'm going to do it now. So I just run it along the sides. I use it very generously, because I want this to stay, do a cross in the middle, sometimes put a few strips along the edges, turn it over, and then I position it centered, 
lay it down. And then what I'll do is I will actually put this like under something heavy, like under a heavy book or something overnight so that it's really adhered before I kind of give it away as a card. And then this with your design painted on it or and stamped on it would go in its envelope and you'd have a lovely card. And then on the back, you can write your message or stamp something on the back as well. The other thing, and I'll talk about this in combination with a folded card, but the other thing you can do, so you can do that same exact process. <coughs> Excuse me. You can do that same exact process. Let me see if I find can find a folded card. So I have some of these. Uh, this was one from last year. This is a folded craft card. Same thing, has an envelope with it, but it comes folded instead of flat. And you can also take a piece of cardstock that you might have and cut it to size and glue that white piece, you know, I would cut this here, but glue that white piece of cardstock inside with a you know a nice border on it. And now you have a nice white canvas to kind of stamp on or hand write on. You can certainly paint something, maybe an accent that kind of goes with whatever design you have on the front, maybe tiny little um, accent of leaves and berries. I think I did that on an envelope somewhere, but I don't have it sitting in front of me here, but maybe I'll find that later. So that's another way you can do that. Um, and let's see, one more way that you can do it. So similar to, um, and this is kind of the, the down and dirty, I don't need any card making supplies whatsoever. But the other thing you can do is you can get just a piece of watercolor paper. You can cut it to size. Um, and then you can uh, fold that piece of watercolor paper to make your own card. Doesn't come with an envelope. You can buy envelopes separately, um, but let's see here. Like if I wanted to do a tiny little note card that is folded, I could just take my watercolor piece of paper, cut to size, make a nice little folded note card, paint on the outside, paint a little accent on the inside, and then you have a card. And if you need to or want to, you could buy little envelopes um, separately that fit to size for these. So those are kind of four different ways of creating a card out of different supplies and materials. Some are card specific that you would have to buy and others are just your watercolor paper um, that you would utilize. So let's do, I'm going to go right on my watercolor card here, um, and I'm going to paint a wreath. So let's do a simple wreath, because I don't want this to go too, too long. So in addition to all the other supplies, and once you've decided which one or method you're going to do, um, you will then go ahead and start to design your layout. The other thing I use a lot before I move on to painting the wreath is um, painter's tape to mark out different areas and paint designs around it. So you can see I have sitting over here, I reuse my painter's tape, so I stick it back to my desk. But I would block this out, and you'll see that if you look at the last video and any of the future um, tutorial videos, you're going to see um, me use this a lot to block out areas um, where the greeting will go and paint a design around it. With the wreath, we're just gonna paint a circle, and then let me show you one other one, one other one. Sorry if I keep moving away from the camera. Uh, oh, so this one. So this I did a square and I actually taped a square in the middle. And how I did that was I just laid out a bunch of tape together, cut it in the shape of a square, put it on to the page, and then painted all around it. And this is just a nice way of creating a really beautiful frame right on your card. And then you could use this just as the card. Oh, there's a sample painted on the back. And write on the back um, or stamp on the back. And, um, or you could affix this um, if you had the right size uh, backing to another card. So that's another way that I like to do that. I really like the squares. I think they look really elegant and really nice. Okay. So last but not least, the other supplies I use for the stamping part of that, and we'll go over that when we get to our Believe, but I have these stamps. These I just picked up this year, and I just ordered a bunch more online because there's a bunch of different ways to, um, or a bunch of different styles of stamps. 
but these I picked up at Michael's, my local hardware store. I did order some. Let's see. It's a be part of my... So I did order some from Amazon online and I'm waiting for one other thing to go with these. So these are silicone stamps. These are really tiny. They're much tinier than I thought they would be, but I think they're gonna work just fine. So you can see they have all kinds of different sayings on here. Merry and bright, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And you can actually order some of these with much longer sayings that would like go in the center of a card. Um, something a little bit more than just kind of an exclamation of Merry Christmas. Like here is one, like have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Like this is a little bit bigger and might go kind of, this one's a little small, but on a smaller card might go right in the center of your card. Um, and this one like comes with a little border. I'm waiting for some more. And the other thing I'm waiting for is, um, and these were all very affordable, like eight bucks for all of these. And then the other thing I just ordered uh, that I'm waiting for are um, not silicone, but they're like um, a clear plastic like block that you actually attach these to. So it acts like the wooden part on these wooden rubber stamps. So you can swap it out, but you attach it to the block so that it's easier to actually stamp. And they're clear, so you can see through it. So that is for another day, another video, another tutorial. I'm very excited to get those and show those to you as well. And I will link them so you can find them as well. Thank you, Rhonda. I appreciate that. Oh, she said beautiful cards. Um, if you have any questions while you're watching, just let me know about supplies and materials, where I find things and how I use them. So I have my ink pads and stamps. Those will come in handy later. I'm really excited to do this class. I'm doing it in person. Um, over the course of this month uh, and my in-person students are gonna really love it. They're especially gonna love the stamping part. We've done hand lettering before and they're not the biggest fans of that. Um, it's a whole new skill to learn and now we can have beautiful greetings and sayings on our cards without having to stress too much about it. Just put them right on there. So if you um, are interested in the stamping technique or really want to learn hand lettering, I'm not your gal, <laughs> as horrible as that is to say. I've been practicing, I'm okay. I can handle so, most of my own hand lettering if I have to, but teaching it, there are some really fabulous resources out there online to learn hand lettering. So um, we're gonna start on, we're gonna do a wreath. We're gonna do this wreath. Um, okay, so First, I'm going to just tape down my card and not because I need a border, but just because I want it to be steady and not like continuously popping up on me. So I've opened this card all the way up. When you do this, make sure you are actually painting on the side that folds correctly. I've painted it like the wrong way before and then you pick it up and realize your card opens backwards. Always a little disappointing <laughs> when that happens. So I'm not trying to make a border here. My wreath is gonna be right in the middle, so it doesn't really matter if these are straight or not. Um, I'm going to find something round. Um, yeah, the hand lettering after you do the painting and it's all done and you do the hand lettering, uh, Rhonda, it can be very disheartening. So I totally get you. Stamping too, you do have to go slow and careful. You'll see at the end here, so that way you get it centered and it's not you also don't get a double impression, uh, which I've done before, but I try to just go with it, you know, go with it, make it part of the, the um, aesthetic of the piece. All right, so I'm gonna find something round. When I do my wreaths, I always put a guideline down. My handy dandy blue tape uh, roll is often used as my template for my wreaths. So this one is going to be right in the center. And these are great because you have two different sizes. You have a slightly smaller and a slightly larger circle. So you can go inside or outside your tape. Um, I'm gonna go with the smaller one. And this is just gonna be my guideline. So I just use a pencil and um, mark down my circle. And it's going to be really important when I paint this wreath and I use a guideline, for me, it's always very important to go both inside and outside the guideline. So on here, you can't see it anymore, but the guideline runs right through the center of this. And I'm not gonna paint just on the outside, I'm gonna do both to create a really full 
and lovely kind of lush um, wreath. We're gonna keep this simple with just three, well, four, I guess, four basic elements. We're gonna do simple leaves. We're going to do sprigs of pine, red berries, and also these outlined leaves here as well. I really like those. Um, okay. Oh, you actually stamp on separate paper and then stick them to your card. Oh, you have more patience than I do. I just go for it. I just go for it and live with my results. Um, but so a great suggestion from one of our commenters is that she, uh, will stamp on something separate and then stick that to her card. Um, I'd be interested to hear like what, what thing, what do you stamp on and how do you affix it to the card? If you want to share that with us in the comments. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my largest element and that would be our simple leaves. Now I did two different colors in this particular one. I did a green and a blue. I think I'm just going to stick with green today. So using uh, my sap green. So I'm using core paints. This is my go-to palette. Um, as of late, I also have, this one is full of Daniel Smith and these I keep kind of bouncing back and forth to. I do like this one as well. Used to use it a lot more, um, but I've been sticking with my core palette for a while. So I'm going to stick with that today. I'm going to pick up some of my sap green and actually first I'm just going to clean out. Sorry, I did not come prepared with a clean palette. Even though I have green over there, I should have just used those. Oh, well. So I'm just scrubbing these up. And then I'm pretty sure I have paper towel. Here, I'm going to clean out these little wells so I can use them. And I might need some clean space over here. Okay. So these are my core paints, QOR. I'm using my silver black velvet brush, my favorite, favorite brush. Um, this is a size eight. I also have my size 12 here. I'm not gonna use the size 12 today. I think I'm gonna stick with the size eight for this size. And these just have the most fabulous little tip on it. I can get so much detail with the tip of this brush. I barely even need my rigor anymore, which is crazy. Um, highly recommend this brush. Alrighty, so let's start with our sap green. We're gonna make this as kind of traditional colors. The other one had a lot of blue in it, um, which I love that for these holiday colors. Um, kind of playing with the color schemes and the aesthetic. It's great. This one we're gonna make more traditional greens and reds. Um, my leaves I'm gonna do a little bit lighter, the broad leaves, and then I'm gonna throw in much bluer dark green leaves for the sprigs of pine. And then we'll do red berries. And then I'm not sure what color I'm gonna do the outline, maybe like a gold color, we'll see. All right, so when I start, and I did tape this down to give this some, um, to steady my card. But when I, when I start going around, if you need to turn your card, if you tape it down to something that's mobile, that can be easier when you're painting in a circle all in the same direction. It can be helpful to turn your card as you're going. I'm just going to make it work. Um, even though I would prefer to turn my card, I like to turn it. So I'm going to start with just simple kind of broader leaves. So I've just placed one down. I'm going to come out, I'm going to put a little stem here and I'm just going to kind of every other one work my way around. Um, I'm going to put another one right here. You don't have to rush through this. You can kind of take your time. This is setting the base for everything that's going to come next. So take your time with this layer. Um, if you kind of get off to one side or you feel like it's unbalanced after you paint it on, that's okay. You're going to use your other elements to kind of balance out what you've done. And you can see I'm painting right across the line here. I will also point out if I was doing this not on camera for an actual card, um, I would have lightened that line considerably, but I want you to be able to see kind of what I'm doing. So I still have to get in this area. It's just the most awkward area for me to paint with it in this direction. 
because I'm also trying not to put my hand down on the other leaves, that's another great reason to turn your card, um, is that you don't want to put your hand in wet paint. I'm going to put something else over here. All right, so we have a response for what our one of my watchers, Rhonda, does. So she says, in, when she does stamping, she cuts the paper down to, so, to the size of the stamp that she wants to use, and then she'll take a stamp pad and ink the edges and then double tape the back and stick it to her card. Works great. Okay, so she cuts a little tiny, you know, to the size of the, not much bigger than what her stamp is gonna be, and then she double, double-sided tape adheres it. All right, I'm just going over some of these a little bit. All right, so there's our leaves. We're kind of all around. It's actually quite full already. We're gonna add more elements, but um, you don't need to fill it out completely because you're gonna add more stuff later on. Just this one, I'm gonna try to help it a little bit. I got a little bit of a puddle in the middle of this one. So I'm just gonna pull. That was completely my fault, but that's okay. All right, so I am also going to be adding those pine sprigs. So I'm gonna, for that, I'm going to take my sap green and I'm gonna add phthalo blue to it. And just, so first I'm gonna add phthalo blue and you can see how much that darkens that color. Phthalo blue is a beautiful, cool blue, has lots of yellow and blue and is very saturated color. So now we have a very dark turquoise -y color. So what I'm gonna do to just bring down um, the saturation of that, not the saturation, I am going to um, bring, I can't think of the word right now. I'm gonna add magenta and it's gonna turn a little bit more of an olivey green. Or, um, sorry, I'm gonna not add magenta. I'm gonna add a lizard crimson and it's gonna desaturate it just a little bit. And it's gonna be more of a grayish green color. There we go. So it's this beautiful dark, ooh, she, Rhonda likes to use a Lazy Susan for when she has to do a lot of card turning. Mm, great suggestion, especially if you have a nice big wooden one. I have a Lazy Susan that I don't use for anything gonna have to come into the studio. All right, so we have this really beautiful dark green color. Um, pines are very blue, you know, have a very blue undertone to them, a lot of them. So we're going to start with those. So now the sprig of a pine, which I will demonstrate on this scrap piece of paper, is going to, these particular ones, I'm gonna do a long branch or a long stem and then just a lot of little stems coming all kind of from the same direction. They don't have to be too complicated, okay? These are gonna be super easy, but I am going to find places, and what I don't want you to worry about is overlapping any of your leaves. You're gonna overlap in some instances, and that's good. That is going to make these feel like they're incorporated into the piece. You're just gonna pretend those leaves aren't there. I mean, you're gonna look for placement. You don't want to um, have it directly like over top of one in like the same exact pattern, like you're trying to cover it up, but you're not gonna worry about them uh, overlapping at all. And you're gonna go around the same way and you want it to be even. Like if I stopped there, this is very uneven. If you were trying for a design that had a heavy side that might incorporate into the design, that's one thing. But when you're trying for a circular kind of even design, you don't need it to be exact or perfectly measured. You don't need to be like, oh, these have to be exactly the same space. I'm actually gonna add another one over here. So off each other. Um, you don't want it to be like mathematically perfect or evenly spaced. One right here. And it's okay to pause between them and kind of assess what you're doing, what you've done. 
Do you really need a really big one there or maybe just a tiny one? And we do have a few more elements to add to this, so no worries. If it's still feeling a little sparse, I'm gonna put a tiny little one here. And do you see these beautiful like flick, little thin flicked lines I can get with this size eight brush? Love it, love it, love this brush. All right, I feel like I made a mistake with that last one, but I'm gonna go with it. It's hard to do this on camera live, guys. I feel like I have to get it just perfect for you. Okay. So I think I'm done with the sprigs. You can always go back as they dry, they lighten a little bit. You can always go back and add in a few more um, darker layers, like just a few. I'm gonna add a few to this one that's already dried. So you have the first layer, which will be slightly lighter than this one that you put on. It just gives it a little dimension, but you're not like redoing the whole thing. I'm just adding a few extra sprigs um, in another layer that's a little darker. Okay, moving on. We are going to do the outline. Okay, so we have these leaves that are actually just like outlines of leaves. And I think that gives it a nice, you know, varied element. The question is, what color am I gonna do these? And does anybody have any suggestions? No. Okay, I'm gonna go with a blue, even though I said I wasn't gonna go blue. I could go with a darker green or a yellow. Hold on, let me see what this gold looks like. So this is, what color is this? I can't remember. I have to get my, not, not raw sienna. It might be raw sienna. Hold on, I'm gonna shake the camera for a second. Whoops. This is raw sienna. Okay, raw sienna gives it this kind of goldish look. But I feel like this is gonna to be too, without the blue, the raw sienna is gonna to be too washed out. I'm sorry, I'm painting on my already done cards. Okay, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go with a blue. I'm gonna go with a blue. And I'm gonna use um, phthalo blue. So phthalo, but I'm gonna add my fabulous favorite best friend in paint, Payne's Gray, and we're going to make like a navy color. And we're gonna lighten it so it's almost like much lighter gray color. All right, a little more blue. All right, we have this beautiful color, beautiful, beautiful. So here's the color. And it's not really a Christmassy color, but I think it's gonna be a nice little accent. All right, and if it's not, it's okay. So for these, we're just going to be just creating the same way we did before, but we're just, instead of pressing, pushing the brush down with all of that pressure, I'm just going to be making the outline of what a leaf would look like. And I'm gonna do that in a few spots. So I'm just going to create one here and one over here. And it's just a different, it's an open element. It gives it like another dimension. And then when we do our berries, we're going to add that pop of red and it's really gonna set off all of these other colors. It's a complement to green. Red and green are complements to each other and when they're put next to each other, they they increase the intensity and the vibrancy of each other. So they, they really do what their name says, they complement each other. All right, so just a few of those throughout. I'm just gonna add this hanging one over here. That's okay, I'm gonna balance that with some berries. So for my berries, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use cadmium red for these, right? That is the color I'm using. Yes, cadmium red medium. 
that is in the core colors. It's this very um, opaque red. So it's not as transparent as some others, but I'm gonna water some of it down. And some of these berries, so berries are just, are just little circles or little ovals. They can be circles or ovals. They don't have to be perfect circles. I'm gonna make mine more kind of egg-shaped, oval-shaped and put a few clusters together. And this is a great red because it is a little bit, you know, if you dilute it with water, it'll get more transparent. But if you really want kind of an opaque color to really pop on here, this color will do it. And I'm just gonna put a few clusters throughout. You can always put a single berry in, but I tend to do them in threes and fours. And this is where you kind of have to pay attention like, is it really heavy on one side or the other? Like up here, and again, this is just the most awkward spot to get to, which is why I saved it for last, because I don't want to put my hand in the rest of the paint. Sorry if you can't see right now. Three over there, we'll do one on this side. Excellent, Where one more right here, maybe a light colored one, maybe two. I like to do just one, I mean. And you can vary the size of them. You can go crazy and get nuts with these. <laughs> Pretty soon before you know it, your whole thing is berries. All right, and then the last but not least, I'm just gonna take, you can just use the red of the berries, but I'm gonna take a little burnt umber, a little brown, and I want these to dry a little bit. So another great tool to have in watercolor and or card making, let me pull this out here where I put it, is a heat tool. So this is my heat tool. I'm gonna just blast these with a little bit of heat really quick. Sorry if that's loud. Um, but it doesn't take long or much. There we go, we'll turn that off. Um, so now they're completely dry and now I'm gonna go in and just add tiny little twigs that kind of connect them. And this you could definitely use a smaller brush for if you want, I'm gonna go with my fabulous size eight. This thing is really like a lifesaver for me. Ever since I got it, I hemmed and hawed over it. I was like, I really don't need another smaller brush. I had this same size in my Princeton brushes, but this is a game changer. This one is so much, sorry, Princeton. I love your brushes for so many reasons and I use them, but, uh, the tip on this is just insane. All right, so the other um, thing you can do is with my burnt umber, I'm just gonna run a few kind of twigs throughout. And this dark burnt umber is like a really nice contrast to everything else that's going on in here. So just kind of along the circle, hitting some berries in some various spots. But this just is another element that is reinforcing the circle. You don't have to put them everywhere. You can definitely skip spots where you wouldn't be able to see twigs or branches. But here we go. All right, so that is the end of the watercolor painting part. We have this beautiful little wreath. Didn't take me long. If I was painting that without any instruction, it would take me five, five minutes. Um, the, especially once you get going and you start painting them um, kind of regularly. If you're making like a whole set of cards, you get better and better as you go and it becomes very routine. All right, so let's get to some stamping. All right, I have, I have two stamps. I just got this other one. This is a gold. This is, ah, this is a gold. Ah, 
and it's really pretty. Um, I'm definitely going to be using this, but I don't think I'm going to use it for this one. I'm going to stick with my black, and you can get inks in all different colors. These, again, I just got from Michael's, which is my one of my local art stores. I also have like a lo hyper local art store that I utilize, like Mom and Pop Shop. I try to go there as much as I can. Um, and I'll, of course, I get a lot of stuff online. It's super easy to have it just delivered. What do we want this one to say? Okay. You folks watching there, you guys get to choose. Um, I'll give you limited choices. Here we have, I already did that one. So we already did believe in the last one, but we have happy holidays. Happy holidays, tis the season, uh, Merry Christmas, and be joyful. Do we have first one to decide? Any comments? Let's see, which one do we want to see in there? So happy holidays, tis the season, Merry Christmas, be joyful. Those are our options and any one of them will look great in there. But the first one to respond, Rhonda, I know you're there. There you go, be joyful, perfect, thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna go with be joyful, yay, I love this one. What a great time of the year to be joyful. There's just so much to be joyful for. All right, so you just gotta be careful when stamping. I've already got ink on my fingers and cleaning your stamps after every time you do it is just not practical. Um, so I'm just getting some of this excess old ink off of here. There we go. My stamp sets, Barb, my stamp sets, these particular sets I got from Michaels. I actually got them like last month. I dug them out of one of their boxes that wasn't even like on the shelf yet. I'm lucky they were priced already. Um, but Michael's is local art supply store in my area. Um, in the Northeast, I think they're pretty popular. Um, you know, it's a chain store. But also I have a bunch online that I've just ordered. So I'll show those in some future videos and give you guys the links to those that I just got on Amazon. And also, um, my I have another local local art store um, that I utilize as well but these came from Michaels and the the brand is Recollections it's like a card making stamp brand so I'm going to just there's a lot of different ways you can do stamps I have an ink pad this is archival ink and I have my Be Joyful stamp here. So the words on the back match up with what's on the front. So you're just going to place it down. I am gently just rocking this back and forth to get enough ink on there and just tapping it lightly. And then I am going to, so the way I do this, I hold it from the sides and I kind of hover above where I want it to be. And this is going to go over, some of my words are going to go over the watercolor. I am happy with that. I'm going to put this one right in the center. You could also put it below. You could put it above. Um, you could make this an open, you know, a side open card and put it this way above and below. Um, so it's really up to you. You can really change the kind of look and feel of your card um, just by where you place the stamp. So I'm gonna go right in the center of my wreath and I'm not gonna care that it is gonna go on a little bit. So I'm just gonna hover it over top, kind of get it straight and then gently place it down and then just give it some nice pressure, a tiny little rock back and forth, like a little vibration, but not a full rock because you will get, and there you can see, <laughs> when I did put it down, you guys made me nervous. I did double stamp right here. I picked up this corner um, ever so lightly. So what Rhonda was saying earlier is when you're stamping, she likes to stamp on a separate set of paper so she doesn't get little mistakes like that. I'm pretty confident. I know I did all of these without that double stamp on camera. You know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit nerve wracking. You guys make me nervous. Um, so uh, just be careful when you do that. When you press it down, make sure you press it down firmly and that you're not picking it up or moving it in any way. I did have a little skip there when I first put it down. All right, so that's our Be Joyful card. And again, you can put it above and below and in lots of different places. And then let's just close this up so I'm not putting my hand in ink later. There we go. 
And then you can just take your card, make sure it's dry. You can hit it with that heat tool again, even on the ink to make sure your ink is dry. And fold it up and then you have a lovely little card. And again, you could stamp something or handwrite something on the inside as well if you'd like. So hopefully uh, you are um, enjoyed this. You got something out of it and how to put together your cards and a bunch of different options that we went over. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget if you're looking for more um more more videos in general you can join my studio crew if you um wouldn't mind liking this video thank you thank you Rhonda. uh liking this video your comments are fabulous subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so share with a friend it really helps me get my videos out there and continue helps me continue to be able to create content for all of you so thank you so much um i'm shana cersei and it's always a pleasure painting with all of you and this video will be up if you want to revisit it um in the channel and I'll see you soon for some more card making ideas throughout the month. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. What was the brush, Diane? The brush, these are my favorite brushes, um, is a silver black velvet brush. This is a size 12 and I've already lost my size eight, but I used a size eight silver black velvet. It's absolutely fantastic. They are a little bit more expensive than entry level, but not, not, you know, super expensive. A little investment in this and this brush will last you forever. So highly recommend silver black velvet brushes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care.